Hello friends and welcome back to the channel. This is another update on my projection display clock. Uh, if you've seen, if you've been following me at all on Instagram or Reddit where I just posted, you'll have seen this uh, in a more complete state which I will show you a little bit later. Um, but I just wanted to go over a couple more of the steps that I've gone through since my last video on YouTube. Um, for a lot of you this will probably be fairly basic information, like obvious information, so um, you might want to skip this video. But if you're tuning in because this is something that you'd like to try and it's maybe your first uh, electronics project, you can stick around for that. I will also be showing uh, a couple more steps about how I modified the displays themselves to accept the uh, LED boards. So I'll jump right into that. Um, let me see here. Let's get a view of the back of this, and let's see. Um, that's currently what the backs look like. If you, if my camera focuses at all, I'm not sure if it's going to, because it's a really crappy camera. You'll be able to see the digits through there, and you can see the green of the LEDs. I should mention these LEDs look super washed out in the video, but anyway. Um, so that's what the backs look like now. This, uh, when if you watch my, I believe it was my first video uh, of the teardown of the displays, you'll recognize this piece potentially. This was the uh, back, this was the furthest back in the display uh, towards this end. And this is the piece that held the incandescent bulbs. And what it has here is it has a uh, grounding plane, which is the uh, this silver piece in the middle. Uh, it just contacts the base of the bulb and acts as a ground. And then uh, this piece has two, uh, let's see if we can get it sideways there, has two little nubs on it. And this is the connector that would normally connect to it. It also has, this is going to be a little difficult to show, maybe I can bring something out. Give me one second. Well, whatever. Here we go. We'll use a a screw. Um, you might be able to see this, you might not. It has little nubs on the inside so it can only be inserted onto this uh, one way and it would be like that. It would clip in um, and it would provide the contacts. There's the ground point and then all of your leads. Well the issue with this is because of these fingers on there, because of these uh, grounding fingers, when you inserted uh, LEDs into it, <laughs> it's like a hook. Uh, and in fact, you'll see that one is bent up here. Um, when you put the LEDs in, everything went great. When you went to go remove the LEDs, it uh, was not a fun time. And so what I ended up doing, as you could see on the back of here, is not only did I cut the nubs off so that uh, the LEDs could sit further into the displays, I also had to remove uh, these grounding straps. Uh, and that was a huge pain in the butt. I wish I had one of these little pins laying around, but um, they're they're pressed in there. And not only that, but they're also um, they have like little teeth on them. It's not screw teeth, but it's really close uh, to prevent them from backing back out. So they were a huge pain in the butt to remove. Uh, and now, unfortunately, while doing that, I'm not able to use incandescent displays or incandescent bulbs. Uh, any more in these displays um, and this isn't really a part you can find online or anything so uh, from here on out these displays will only be able to be driven more or less by LEDs so that was the modifications I did to this this back panel next up you'll see here uh, and sorry for my horrible lighting and like I said horrible camera setup this was my first time using strip board um, a lot of you will probably know what this is, some of you may not. What this is, is it's a PCB that all of the, and I'm going to get this wrong, um, I don't remember which is rows and which is columns, but uh, all of the vertical rows, we'll call them, are connected via copper trace and then they're all separate in the columns. Um, what that enables you to do is um, you can more easily potentially hook things up 
Uh, so that's what I used for this project for making the LED back panels. I was going to custom order PCBs, but I was kind of in a hurry to get this thing working and, and tested. Uh, so I, I used uh, stripboard. Now, I'll show you the other modifications that I had to do in order to get these working. Uh, let's see, I actually have some diagrams here. I'll see if I can pull them up. Okay. I actually drew the schematic up in Fritzing, uh, which is my first time using Fritzing. I've used um, Eagle, Eagle Cam before. Like I said, I was planning on designing a printed circuit board, a full PCB for these. Uh, but anyway, let's see if I have this in the right orientation. Here's my original drawing. Um, it's just got the LEDs. It was going to be 12 by 11. Um, I had tested two LEDs in this configuration into the back panel of the displays, and it seemed to work great. Uh, of course, when I went to make them, uh, that was not the case. Once I added three, either either way, uh, they didn't fit in the displays anymore. So I had to, uh, after I cut all my circuit boards to 12 by 11, um, I then had to redo them all. And the way I ended up going with is this configuration here, where the data out and the data in uh, of the LED legs are connected. Um, so more modifications were required to do that, uh, which I will now get into. So this is how I got my strip board, uh, and this is what I ended up with. Uh, and I'll go into the details of this. You can see a couple little issues already. Um, so the way I did this, the way I found easiest, and because I have the tools, uh, I used a bandsaw to cut this. Uh, worked really, really well, really quick, nice, fairly clean cuts. And then to get it down further to this size, then I took it on a belt grinder and ground it down to be really smooth and, and nice edges. Uh, probably don't need to do all that work. You can probably just cut it with the scissors, maybe. I've seen that it cracks though, so. Um, bandsaw worked best for me and then just making it nice and smooth. Um, the other thing I had to do is because I was inserting two LED legs into one hole. Uh, my camera is horrible, uh, but you can kind of see it here. You can probably see it better further away. You can see there's a couple of spots that look a little bit different, and those I actually manually drilled out with a pin vise and a drill bit uh, to just a little bit bigger so that the two legs would fit inside of it. So there's that. So yeah, that's how I did the boards, and as you can see, they're here, and it's running in its clock uh, mode currently. Uh, ignore the super crappy wiring to the Arduino, to the W, uh, to the Node MCU. It's just temporary to, to make sure everything worked. Um, but I will show you the rear of these. If you've seen my Instagram, Sexual Hot Dog, you've already seen this, but uh, I'll show it to you anyway. All right, there's the rear of the boards, tons of jumper wires, uh, it was a huge pain in the butt, super messy, um, took me eight hours to do this with cutting the circuit boards, um, drilling the holes, drilling the uh, rows that I didn't need to connect, all that fun stuff, then cutting all these wires to length, huge pain in the butt probably wouldn't do it again, I'd probably make the PCB, uh, but there it is, and it is working. So yeah, that's that. Um, so I will plug it in again, and I'll show you a couple of little features when it first started, uh, but I've programmed a delay into the LEDs uh, for like a smoother transitioning effect. Uh, so that's what you're seeing there, is they're, they're fading from one digit to the next. Um, now I will plug it into the clock and I'll show you the boot up sequence and I'll, I'll describe what it's doing uh, as it goes through that. Before I do that, I'll actually show you the uh, this aluminum plate is something that I made to hold the displays. They have uh, a screw, uh, they have a nut actually that's inserted into uh, the housing both on top and on bottom and that's what I'm currently using to uh, hold these displays together. So this is just, uh, I don't know how thick this is, um, could measure it, probably should, but it's just a, some aluminum plate that I had laying around. 
uh, and just hand or obviously drill this on a drill press and it's got uh, top and bottom mounts and it's just holding the displays in place and keeping them lined up properly so yeah so now I will plug in uh, the LED driver module and uh, we'll show you the boot up sequence and what it's doing all right so the display gets plugged in it displays as red zero that's saying that it's connecting to the internet or sorry that it's not connected then you saw it display the one the green one that means that it was connected to uh, my Wi-Fi and then it uh, starts displaying the digits and as you can see it's got the fade effect so yeah that's it it automatically connects to an NPT um, NTP time server and uh, starts writing the digits to the display so yeah uh, there's one last thing I will show you uh, and I'll go over some of my future plans give me one second and I will do that alright so these are some acrylic faces that are made for uh, I drew these up in SolidWorks just with the correct dimensions and what these do is they align to uh, bolt holes on the front of the displays um, and so this will be the face of the display uh, I'm not fully done with you know uh, I actually sandblasted this one to give it the, the etch uh, I still need to dial in my settings for the best uh, possible etch to give it the best looking digits uh, but I've got a couple different colors there that I'm working with uh, as potential suitors for that front display uh, it's just going to cover up those bolt holes that you see and give it a more like unified cleaner look uh, I'll also be adding either black bands in between the digits or um, colons something along those lines to give it a little better separation on the display itself okay so that's future plans and the other future plan is I'm going to be building a case for this uh, I am partial to and just because I have some and it's really expensive uh, black walnut so the plan is either a full black walnut case for it or potentially uh, black walnut sides with an aluminum uh, face I am would love to hear your suggestions what what do you think would look better all black walnut or a combination of black walnut and aluminum let me know uh, so yeah sorry about how long this video was hopefully you enjoyed uh, the demonstration if you have any questions feel free to ask uh, either here or on my Instagram if you want and uh, yeah we'll catch you on the next one when hopefully this thing has a case designed for it so yeah take care guys